like the cobblestones. Go, 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 go. All right, first afternoon in Oaxaca and it's beautiful. It's colorful. So we're going to a suggested restaurant for some mole, which I understand is a chocolate sauce or some description. And I guess I'm gonna report from there and I'm gonna show you all the beautiful colorful streets that we're gonna be passing. Let's go. installation and I think it might have a little bit to do with the watermelons we saw in the Frida Kahlo Museum. It was one of her last pieces of work and then apparently a few days before she died she wrote Viva la Vida in the watermelons. So yeah, maybe this is uh, more cryptic, more meaningful than we think, but it's also very beautiful. your mole baby that was great it's not my favorite thing in the world but that was actually very very good and I would eat it again so nice. I recommend tacos in Oaxaca. that was excellent <laughs> mole with a wonderful guide has already told us a very many details about Oaxaca and the greater region and what we're about to see. So I hope we can get some coffee then we will get to it. Let's go. This is Monte Alban. It used to be the center point of political and social life in Mesoamerica before the Spanish colonization. We were incredibly lucky to have a guide from the indigenous group known as the Zapotecs, the people that ruled over Monte Alban, to welcome us to this UNESCO heritage site and take us through over a thousand years of its history. A little bit of history about this amazing place. A very interesting thing our guide told us is that in the area of Oaxaca, which is 570 different municipalities, over three quarters of them are actually self-governing. But let me tell you some more cool facts about that. For example, when people in the municipalities that are self-governing turn 18, villages can choose to make them go into a type of social service. So this can be anywhere from one year to three years and it doesn't include a pay. But there's also a lot of positives. After you do your social service, you can expect things like very free water, free land if your family is struggling, although you cannot sell that land, very importantly. You can get buried in the cemetery without paying a fee and also there's things like free childcare and clinics that operate in those villages and they're all communally operated by the people of the village. It sounds pretty fair to me, but I'm not sure about you. Let me know in the comments below. The Zapotecs also had very firm beliefs in terms of the energies, the universe, and every baby could figure out what its spirit animal is by laying it on the ground, surrounded with a circle of ash, 
take the baby back inside and leave it like this for now. After the night was done, they would come back and assess the ground and see which type of animals would have come overnight based on the footprints they would find on the ground. That if your energy truly matched your spirit animal's energy, you could actually transform into your spirit animal. Jaguars and pumas are also very often mentioned in the Zapotec tradition and they still live in the surrounding hills of the city of Oaxaca, but um, according to our guide, our spirit animals are a little bit less cool than that. Let's see what it is. What do you think it is, Vinay? A scorpion. Ooh. December, a peacock. Ooh. I'm not. Strutting the stuff here, no? That's the male, so I'm a female. I pick and choose. A monkey. Oh, honey! Oh, well, it's the same in Chinese. Monkey bear! Yeah. And this little guy <laughs> is a bat. Remember when I mentioned jaguars? Actually, this is a very important point because this used to be known as the city of jaguars <laughs> in the Zapotec language. Hey, buddy! Do you want to be part of the vlog? Hi! Hello! Hola! Show me your little feet. Feet, 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 feet. Mwah. Mwah. So this comes from the tree over there and it's super soft. Almost feels like silk but has the consistency of cotton. You can tell why everybody had nice skin. That's what they were using instead of cotton. And they still make shawls and different types of fabrics with it. After all the learning, it was time for a little reward. A nice warm cup of the local train, Tijate. Pequeños. 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 Because, you know, you're not very used to having floaty things and drinks, but they're actually very flavorful. Nine out of ten. Just as we thought Oaxaca cannot get more colorful, we are yet in another colorful part of town and it seems to be even busier. And we are finally enjoying our Tahate. Honey, how would you rate it? I think it's, I'd give it 10 out of 10. This stuff floating is basically like aerated cacao, which is just delicious. So wow. it's, like drink, it's like eating buttered chocolate. When you just yeah, it. it's super, it's not sweet, but it's super creamy. And I would almost call it like an ancient herb frappuccino. Well, that doesn't mean that Starbucks can culturally appropriate it. No. No, it's not culturally appropriate. But we can make it at the We're going to make it at home now. We had a lot more planned for Oaxaca, but unfortunately Montezuma took his revenge on some of us in a restaurant that you would least expect it. I'm sure you have heard enough. See you in the next video.